Conover. My wife Susan and I run a craft school in Parkman, Ohio. I teach woodworking, she teaches fiber arts. I have had a love affair with wood turning since I was a child. For many years I have uh, taught wood turning, uh, written about the subject, and even helped design lathes. I have had a close working relationship with Tetnatool International for some time now, in fact since they came to this country. I have always admired their lathes for their sturdy uh, workmanship and uh, thoughtful design. In fact, uh, we chose uh, to put Tetnatool lathes in, in our turning uh, workshop and we use them uh, as student lathes. We have eight of them working here. They've been working here for on about five or six years now and uh, they have uh, taken use and even abuse and come through smiling. In uh, 2001, when I did the second edition of my uh, book, The Lathe Book, Taunton Press, who was my publisher, uh, chose the Nova 3000 to be on the cover of this book because it was an exemplary lathe uh, that would uh, be excellent for a beginner to buy. This is the uh, Nova 1624, which is the replacement to the uh, Nova 3000, which was on the market for about 12 years, so it was time to freshen up the design a little. Uh, it's a super lathe, and I'd like to take a few minutes with you to show you some of the nifty features in this new lathe. by looking at capacities. As the name 1624 implies, we can, with a stock lathe, do spindle work up to 24 inches long. We can also swing faceplate work up to 16 inches in diameter. Uh, the dash 44 in the nomenclature means that with an optional bed extension right here, we can do up to 44 inches between centers. A lot of capacity here. This lathe is equipped with a swiveling headstock by loosening this screw with a knockout bar so, and flipping this lever. We can move the headstock in 22 and a half degree detents. Uh, 22 and a half degrees of swivel right here is very nice because we can simply use the existing tool rest like so for uh, face plate work. It puts us in a better position. We have to le lean over the lathe and then, so it's easier on our back. And uh, with a bowl gouge, uh, sometimes uh, you have to uh, get uh, way over here like this, and you don't usually have to remove the tailstock, uh, and so it's not in the way of our uh, faceplate work. You can, may also swim, swivel this all the way around to 90 degrees and put a optional outrigger, which will bring our tool rest around, and we can swivel it either way with the outrigger. We could do it to the front of the lathe, or the back of the lathe, and that would be dictated on whether we're left or right-handed and somewhat the space considerations in our shop and where we have the lathe located. One uh, final point I'd like to make about this excellent headstock design is the motor. First of all, it's placed in a thoughtful way so that it counterbalances the load placed on the headstock by the weight of the chuck and the weight of the work. You tend to have a balanced load, so especially when you swivel the head, you uh, have the least vibration. It's also a very powerful motor. It's 1.5 horsepower, and it has a reverse feature, which is hardly ever found on an entry-level lathe. Uh, finally, uh, the um, fan on the motor is positioned such that it tends to suck in the least amount of dust and run that through your motor. The Nova 1624 also has a 24 position indexing. Right here you can look through this small hole in the headstock and actually read numbers in here 1 through 24. And by turning this uh, 
like so, it will lock at each of these 24 positions. And 24 is nice because it's divisible by 2, 4, 6, or 8. And this gives us about any combination we would need. A very nice convenience of the new 1624 is the hybrid stand, which is available as an optional accessory. Uh, it is made from very heavy steel sections here, uh, which can be filled with lead shot, uh, sand, or concrete to increase the weight of the lathe. A very nice feature. And it also has uh, a swivel foot here, which is on a ball and socket joint. And this allows the uh, foot pad to exactly conform to the floor. And you can set this lathe up on an uneven floor system and with a small amount of adjustment right in here, make it sit perfectly level and rock solid. The outcome of the fact that the stand was designed from the get-go as an integral part of the lathe and not as an afterthought is that once we get this lathe into our own shop, and, and on our own floor is that we have a very stable lathe uh, but the legs are such that they are out of the way. We can get right up to this lathe uh, and move around, do our turning without them being in the way. Uh, they are also such that if you have a, a bit of a space problem and you need to jockey this lathe around a bit to move it for a special turning need, you can do it. It isn't too bad to move it. Fairly easy. The Nova 1624 has a wide range of speeds. Uh, we have a speed indicator for these eight speeds uh, right here and right here. Uh, this one is for North America while the other one is for the rest of the world. We have 60 hertz. Uh, hertz current in North America and 50 hertz in the rest of the world. And that means that the uh, any, uh, any motor, uh, any induction motor, uh, would run about one-sixth difference in speed in, in the two areas. Uh, so for a low speed, we have 114 RPMs in North America and 178 in the rest of the world. And we go all the way up to 3,600 RPMs in North America and only 3,000 in the rest of the world, and that's because the uh, difference is more pronounced uh, with the higher RPMs. Uh, you have a very nice uh, set of viewing windows in which you can see where the pulley is on the eight steps. We can see that we're at this 2160 speed. If we wanted to go down to 684 RPMs, we would have to move the belt, and that we do from inside the headstock. Let's go around and take a look at how we do that. It never hurts to unplug your lathe during belt change or any time you're doing maintenance work on it, for that matter. Uh, so with it unplugged, we'll first loosen the belt by undoing this cam lock and moving the motor uh, forward like that. And we'll now open up this belt cover. I'll raise that cover, and we're going to put a little light down in there so we can see things well. And we now just have to slip this belt over to the new uh, pulley setting that we want and walk it right up on like so. We can now tension that belt and double check that we've got good alignment. We do. Uh, we'll close the cover like so and lock the cam lock and plug in our lathe and we're ready to go at the new speed.